Hi there, this is Holly from Let's Plan making a tutorial video to show you how I navigate through my meal planner. Um, I am using GoodNotes on an iPad. You may use this planner with other devices and other apps. If you are unfamiliar with the tools within the app you are using, just head on over to YouTube and um, search that tool or your device or your app and I'm sure you'll get a million videos. If you have a hard time and you're not getting the information you need, please reach out to me on Etsy. Um, in the messaging app and I will help you. So this is the front page. To get to the index page, we're going to just swipe over. Now everything from here is fully hyperlinked. So you have outside tabs that have pretty much the same information that the index page has. All these are hyperlinked, any of the words on the index page. So that just makes for quick and easy navigation. If you're on the index page, you can just jump to something or you're on a different page, use the outside tab. So I'm going to start by showing you how I would put a recipe in the book and then copy the title of that recipe to the weekly planning, uh, meal planning page. So this is a undated weekly meal planner. You do have a monthly page if you want to fill out the monthly um, meals. Most people just jump from week to week and then save them that way. So it's completely up to you and I'll show you further when we get further along the page options that you have to put your meals on. So right now I'm gonna click on the dinner tab. So I have the option to click here or up here on the index. I'll just go ahead and click here. It'll bring us to our uh, dinner recipe page. So every one of these lines, one through 40, are hyperlinked to an individual recipe page. So if you um, need more than 40, you can duplicate this page. And um, this is how you would duplicate in GoodNotes. The third icon in here with the plus sign on it opens this drop down window. I always leave my settings on after so you know where your duplicated page ended up and you just go ahead and click on the picture of the page and it will drop another one in. Another thing you can do if you're running out of space but you have recipes that you just aren't going to make again, you can go ahead and use the erase mode um, in the app you're in and just erase it off and then you can just erase the recipe page or just not jump to it anymore. So a few options for you, but since I have this honey garlic uh, shrimp here, I just go ahead and I click on the title takes me right over to the page. So I filled this out and I wanted to show you how you um, could fill out some pages quickly. There's a few different ways you can do this. Um, I use the texting mode within GoodNotes to fill out this page. I just like it better than my personal handwriting. So you can go ahead and fill out the recipe by using the pen mode here or the texting mode, which is here. And if you're using text, you just click on that blue T you tap on the page and then just start typing and you can move it around your page where you want. I'm just gonna delete that. And then to get rid of your keyboard, you just hit that keyboard. Um, you can also do the talk to text, which is on your keyboard. Let me show you real quick, cause I do like using that, oops. Um, if you wanna use the speaker here, it makes it super fast to go ahead and talk to text. Sometimes you do have to correct it though. Okay, and another way that I like to put recipes in my recipe book, which is kind of a life hack, which makes it really quick and fast, um, but your recipe page doesn't look as cute as this one. Let me go to a blank page and show you what I do. I'm just gonna swipe over and go to um, this blank page. That previous one is what I was using for another video. Um, so here's what the blank recipe page will look like. What I like to do is take screenshots of recipes, whether I'm looking through a cookbook, um, recipe cards, Pinterest, Google, I will take a screenshot and because I have the cloud linked to my device, I can get to my pictures through my cloud and then I just add that screenshot to my recipe page. So let me show you how I would do that. So you do have to have the editing mode on and then the picture icons about in the middle here, tap on that and then it will show up your photos here in this line or you can tap on your page and it'll drop a bigger window down. So what I will do is take the recipe and sometimes it takes a few screenshots depending on how it's laid out, especially on Pinterest, to get the full um, recipe and ingredients. So I'll take a picture of the instructions. There it is. And then obviously I need to crop out, you don't have to, but I like to crop out any of the busyness and the advertisements. So by doing that, there's these two blue rectangles. Just click on one of them, it doesn't matter which one. It'll give you this bar, click crop, drag these little blue dots in, get rid of any of your writing you don't want or any of the um, designs you don't want, click done. 
And then there you have it and you can resize it, move it around your page, you can place it right on the instructions and voila. So it's just like putting a sticker or a digital insert into any digital planner. So that's the instructions. And then I obviously took a picture of the ingredients. I did the same thing. And then I also took a picture of um, the photo because I'm a very visual person and I like to have a picture of what the recipe will look like. So you would just go ahead and crop, slide that over to the photo spot and then you're done. So that's just a really quick and easy way to get recipes into your meal planner, especially if you're trying to add a bunch um, right now, right after you got the meal planner, um, just so you're not sitting there for hours writing out recipes. So just one quick way to do it. And then if you have something on your screen you don't want, if you're still in that picture mode, you just tap on it and you click the red X and it will take it away for you. So if you get it on there and it's not right, you can go ahead and take it away. Um, this little hyperlinked section here that says dinner recipes, if I turn on the hyperlink mode and I click on that, it'll take me back to my main list. So what I wanna do is copy and paste the name of that recipe in my weekly planner under one of the dinners. So what I'm going to do now is just tap on it. Oh, I need to turn on my editing mode. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, nope, that's not what I want. Let me go back to dinner. There it is. All right, if you don't see the option up here in the, in the corner to turn on your tools, go ahead and click that down arrow that's showing, then it'll bring it back up. So go ahead and turn on your editing mode and then I tap on that. It brings up this bar and I click copy. Then I turn off my, edit, my hyperlink mode or my editing mode, get into hyperlink mode and I go to meal plan and then I decide, you know, what month. So let's just say we're in June and I wanna put this on a dinner. I go ahead and just tap on the screen and hit paste. And then what I do from here um, to make it smaller to fit in that particular square, I just turn on the text mode and I tap on it and then it allows me to bring it to the size I want and then it also allows me to move it around the page where I want and then I just click off of it. And then if you did want to, so this is the weekly um, layout. You have the option here for week one, two, three, four, and five for every week. And then over here you have all your monthly options. If you wanted to use this planner as a monthly meal planner, so right now we're in June, um, you could get to the monthly page just by swiping over and it'll bring you to the June, oops, it'll bring you to the June monthly page, or you can get into the monthly page by going to your index. If you turn off your hyperlink mode and you go to your index, um, right here, a monthly calendar, that'll give you this. And then when you would click on June, it would also take you to the June page. So like I said, most people use this as a weekly um, meal planner. To get to the weeks, if you're on the main page, you just click on one of these and it'll take you to the week of that month. So that there's a lot of hyperlinks in here. So it's really easy, easy navigation. If you're on a meal page and you're not sure what recipe you wanna use and you don't wanna you click the outside tabs, you go ahead and just click, it'll bring you to all your lunch recipes. So that's how easy that is. Um, the pages that you will use the most within the planner also have these extra icons on the top that allow you to get to them quicker. So this little shopping cart is the grocery list and then you can duplicate this page if you need more. Um, this will take you back to the meal plan option. So all your meal plans. So if you click on one of those, it'll take you back to the main meal plan page. This one here that looks like the food is the inventory option. So you do get inventory for freezer, pantry, and fridge. Um, and you can click on these, it'll take you to the page. Um, you can swipe. Using your finger to swipe back and forth in the planner is really easy too. There are 900 pages though, so you don't wanna be swiping through everything. But if you know pages are close, like in different categories, you can go ahead and use your finger to swipe to fill them out if you don't wanna jump with your hyperlinks. And then you have the option to get back to the recipes and the index. Um, and like I said, those will be on the most popular pages that you would be navigating th through the most. Okay, let me take you through the other uh, templates just to show you what's in here quickly. I'll just go down the side. So like I said, we just did inventory. This is the meal plan again. You would click on your month, your grocery, oops, I just clicked off of it, your grocery list. This is the recipe index. So these are all the main recipes. You have a note paper section. Um, so you do have a spot for lists, lined paper, dot grid graphs. I'm going to show you the stickers real quick and explain this. This planner does not come with stickers with installed. It comes with the GoodNote sticker book and the PNG individual sticker files. Um, if you are using GoodNotes as your app, I would suggest you just use the GoodNote sticker book. It's hyperlinked, it'll be much quicker, and you basically do a copy and paste. 
if you're unfamiliar to, on how to use any of the stickers, um, whether it's PNG or the GoodNote sticker book, go back to the sticker file that was given to you at purchase and you will find tutorials there that will explain it in detail how to download and use them. So this is where you would add PNG stickers into your planner, like if you were not using the GoodNotes app and weren't capable of having that GoodNotes sticker book because it is only meant for GoodNotes users because it's a good notes file so it won't work with any other app but it's not hard to add in individual PNG stickers and even if you do have good notes you may want to add in other PNG stickers that you have from other um, planners so this is where you would go ahead and add those in and then you would just do a copy and paste method and put those on your um, pages where you want them and like I said all that info will be with your sticker video so I just wanted to show you that quickly so let's go on to the sections this is another nice area. You have four customizable sections. These are great if you're planning parties and having big recipes, like big events, graduation parties, holidays, or like if you have um, any restrictions or like maybe a child that has a lot of uh, restrictions on food and a lot of notes you have to keep. All the, this customizable section, you can add in templates, pictures, recipes, um, possibly maybe there was a recipe category I missed. You could make one of these customizable sections into that recipe cat category. So what you would do is put the title of your category. If you were doing some kind of event, let's say you just put holiday in here, you click on it. You have space to add more of your um, category if you have more details or you don't, you don't have to fill it out if you don't want to. And then you can swipe and there's blank pages in here and you could add in digital inserts, screenshots, just use it to write in whatever you wanna do. The possibilities are endless. Um, let me show you the last couple tabs here. So we have the specialty index. So um, on the main index page, you did see this, but this is um, gives you a little more room if you need to have notes. But um, any recipes that are a little more restrictive or that I didn't have room for on the outside tabs, I didn't have enough space for all these. So you have the gluten-free, the vegan, the vegetarian, the dairy-free, and then I do have a spot for holiday recipes, for school lunch recipes, diet recipes, like if you're on a strict diet, or family recipes. So this is nice to have. So this is under the specialty index or on the main index page. And then the very last tab here are your favorites. So these are just any recipes that are your favorites. Um, and then again, these will also all be linked to their individual recipe page, just like any of the other categories. And then on the other side here, you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, salad, side dish, soup, bread, beverage, dessert, snack, and appetizers. So there is a lot of pages in this planner. I tried to cover it all. Um, I hope I covered everything you needed to know in this video. Please, please, if you have any questions or concerns, message me on Etsy. I'm always available for my customers. I only want happy customers. And thank you for purchasing your planner and happy planning.